Hey everyone, this is a video that I've been meaning to make for quite a long time, and um, thanks for being patient with me while I get around to it, but this is a technique that I found to be very useful in my work with uh, the bridge between Serato and Ableton Live. So this deals with how to map every parameter in Serato Scratch Live using only two knobs on your MIDI controller. Um, you know, I used to wonder why Serato has so many things that are MIDI, MIDI mappable, but I didn't have any MIDI controllers that had m that many knobs or buttons, but Pure Data actually makes this very easy, and uh, so let's talk about that. So if you don't know what Pure Data is, I'm not going to go into too much depth about that, but it's a visual programming language that is uh, for free, and you can download and install that. Now, of course, there is the commercial version, which is Max for Live or Max MSP, and uh, nothing against those, those are great programs with very strong user communities, but the Pure Data community is also very well supported and so forth. And, you know, again, it's free, so um, I definitely recommend that. So anyway, get Pure Data uh, installed and on your computer, and you should come up with a console window like this. I'll just go ahead and start all over. And then if you go to Control N to start a new canvas, or, um, what is that, Command N on Mac, I always forget, I am a Mac user, but uh, <laughs> I, I can never remember the conversion keys between Windows, but anyway, as you can see, I've also got Serato Scratch Live open here, and that's important that you open Serato Scratch Live first, and that way Pure Data will be able to recognize um, Scratch Live as a MIDI in option. So that's what we'll go ahead and do, is in Pure Data, go to Preferences, and then to MIDI settings, and then just make sure you have your MIDI controller set up. So I'm going to be using just one of those cheapo um, M Audio X Session Pros. And then we're going to go to Output, and we want to go to Scratch Live MIDI In. So make sure, and, and it gives you some other slots for MIDI controllers, but we don't really need to use those right now. And so using a little bit of Pure Data's visual programming, we can get this going right away. So first of all, uh, create a control in object. You can do that either by going to the put menu, by putting in an object, so it's C-T-L-I-N, and then create three number atoms, which is uh, control three or command three. Oops, and then we're gonna wire those all together. And these three slots are um, so you have controller value, controller number, and MIDI channel right here, okay? Now we can limit these, so if we wanted to say we only want to choose controller number 14 on channel one, we can use those as creation arguments. And then you see the other two outlets disappear, so we don't need those anymore. And we just have the controller value, right? So let's create another control N and wire up the number atoms to those. And so you have control, or controller number 15 and then the control values there. Okay. So we're gonna go to control out, C-T-L-O-U-T. And so what we'll do is we'll use the first controller. Actually, let's limit this. So control 15 and one. So controller 14 is sending these values. Controller 15 is sending these values here. And control out, if you look at the help file, the left inlet is the control value, the middle inlet is the controller number, and the right inlet is the channel number. So what we can do is set up a message, which is command two or control two. And let's say we want to keep all this on MIDI channel number one. And we'll just connect that to the third inlet. And that way, every time we have a message that um, will bang channel number one for the uh, control out. Now we could put channel 16 or whatever we want in this. It doesn't really matter. Um, it's, it's really up to you how to set that up. Okay, so we'll set this so Serato can recognize some MIDI values. And then we'll use this 
for our control number. So control 15, so we'll start with number one. We just move the controller up, and then we would move this so Serato recognizes it. I'll show you that here in a moment. And then we'd move it up to controller number two, and then move this around. So I'll just demonstrate here what that is going to look like. Let's see if I can get both of these on the screen here. So in Serato, we're going to go to MIDI map mode. And actually, a lot of these are MIDI mapped already, so we'll go to a new MIDI template. And we'll do pure data. So none of these should be MIDI mapped at this time. So let's just start off with the pitch bend of the left deck. And if we move controller 14, which is over here, if we click on this, move controller 14, you'll see that it recognizes it. Okay, So it shows as channel 1 control, um, continuous control 1 on MIDI channel 1. Now, of course, you can tab to change the direction of that. And let's go over here. And if we move control 15 to 2, and then we move this, so you can see. So hopefully, you get the idea. Hit tab and it'll. There we go. And let's just map some other things. So, this effect knob. So, if we use control 15 to go to number three and then move this, there we go. Use control 15 to go to number four, and then move control 14. So as you can see already, I'm just using two knobs to map just about everything. And this could go on channel one, it could go from zero to 127, um, then channel two, zero to 127, again, all just with two knobs. And so hopefully you see the uh, utility of this technique. And then from there, we can go into Ableton Live and control all of these messages or all of these knobs from um, MIDI clips. I have another video on how to automate Serato Scratch Live so you could use that technique. And, um, you know, go from there. So just use your creativity. One thing that I wish Serato did have was a way of listing which controls were assigned to which knobs and so forth. So you kind of have just have to write those down in a spreadsheet. But it doesn't take that long. And, um, I think you'll find that it has really been worth it. So if you have any questions about any of these techniques, please feel free to let me know. Again, here is the pure data patching. Very, very simple. And, um, you know, I hope to see what you come up with. So drop me a note. I'll, I'll put the link for downloading pure data in the information box. And, um, yeah, let me know if this is uh, useful to you. And I will see you next time. All right. Bye-bye.